Hi guys, welcome to another lecture. And today we'll be discussing something about parietal lobe dysfunction. And before I begin, I would like to request you to like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And you can check out my amazing course at my app. If you are a pediatric resident, um, uh, amazing courses are available. Pediatric masterclass, more than 150 videos now. And uh, you can also check out my image-based session. In that also more than 15 lectures. Uh, image-based session for NEET, PG, FMG, and IMEZ. So please make sure that you download the app. So parietal lobe, as you can see this image that I'm drawing, okay? This image that I'm drawing the parietal lobe in which you have a central sulcus, okay? This is a central sulcus, central sulcus, and anterior to it, it is the frontal lobe. Uske piche, you have the parietal lobe, and then there is a there is a presence of parieto occipital sulcus like this parieto occipital sulcus. So the area behind the central sulcus, this is the primary sensory area, primary sensory area, which is the post central gyrus, post central gyrus. Okay, it is the primary sensory area, and anterior to the central sulcus, you have the primary motor area. Okay, now uh, behind the primary sensory area, you have an area known as supra marginal gyrus this area is known as supra marginal gyrus and the area which is formed when the uh, when the lateral sulcus and the parieto occipital sulcus this is parieto occipital sulcus and this is the lateral sulcus the area between both of them is the angular gyrus angular gyrus so these three gyrus are the primary gyrus in the uh, parietal lobe. Okay, so first one is the post central gyrus, post central gyrus, which is the primary sensory area. It is the granular cortex, granular cortex, and this is a sensory area, and this is divided into two parts. So when there is a damage to the sensitive area, uh, sensory area, sensory has the touch, the sensory has the passive movement, sensory has the appreciation of all the movements. So when you have a dominant and a non-dominant area uh, is, you know, both if there are there. So both areas are similar. So if you have a dominant hemisphere damage or if you have a non-dominant hemisphere damage, both the manifestations are same. Both, both the manifestations are same. Okay. So. Uh, what are the manifestations of injury to the post central gyrus or the sen uh, sensory area? So first, you do not uh, you have a loss of postural. You have a loss of passive movement sensation. Passive movement sensation. Then a light touch. Light touch is gone. Light touch is gone. Localization is gone. Localization is gone. Then there is a two point discrimination. Two point discrimination. Two point discrimination usually can discriminate, uh, you know, around four mm of the two different points. The area, the, the length between or the, the space between two centers should be uh, around four mm. So two point touch discrimination is uh, abnormal. Two point touch discrimination is abnormal. And there is also abnormality of size shape. So imagine I, I am I'm touching this. This this is a Coke can. Okay. So when I touch it, okay, what do I feel? Uh, if I close my eyes, I feel that, okay, it is a smooth surface. It is a cylindrical body. So all that is lost in a patient where you have the primary sensorial abnormality. So there is loss of appreciation, appreciation of size, shape, and texture. Okay. And there is something known as perceptual rivalry. Perceptual rivalry. Okay. What is perceptual rivalry? And this is the characteristic feature of the parietal lobe abnormality. So when two stimuli are up, uh, applied to the opposite sides, okay, two stimuli are up, uh, applied to the two sides of the body, same body part. Okay. So like I am touching munch my shoulder from one. Second, I am touching my other shoulder. So this, when I touch them both, I can feel them both. But in case of parietal abnormality, the side at which there is a lesion on the opposite side where it innervates, that area you do not uh, feel the same sensation as you feel on the other side because there is perceptual rivalry. But if you take some time, like if you touch this and after five seconds you touch this, then you can feel this. Okay, So that is what perceptual rivalry is. 
So these are the abnormality in the post central gyrus. But the next important part is supra marginal gyrus and angular gyrus. Now the supra marginal gyrus and angular gyrus, these are important because they have something known as vernix area. Okay, they have something known as vernix area in the dominant in the dominant hemisphere, dominant part or lobe. You have a vernix area. Also, you have skills of handling numbers, skills of handling numbers and calculation. And calculation. So, this is again very important. In the non-dominant part, in the non-dominant part, what do you have? You have the concept of body image and you have shapes. Shapes and awareness. Awareness of the external environment. Shapes and awareness to environment. Now, if this is not very clear to you, we will see the lesions and the abnormality so that this becomes very clear with you. Also, you also have to remember the optic, the visual optic radiation of the visual pathway. They are extremely close to the parietal lobe. So, when there is a parietal lobe injury, you might also have association of optic abnormalities, which the optic abnormalities that you see with the damage in the Parietal lobe is the pi in the ground appearance. Pi in the ground appearance when it is in temporal lobe, it is the pi in the sky. So this causes a lower homonymous, lower homonymous quadrinopia. So lesion to the angular and uh, supramarginal gyrus, you have lower homonymous hemianopia. Now, dividing it into two parts, non-dominant lesions, non-dominant lesions of supramarginal gyrus and dominant lesion of supramarginal and angular gyrus. So, if the do dominant hemisphere is involved, you have confusion between left and right. So, you have a left-right confusion. You, do, you, con you get confused. You know, you become directionally impaired. Okay? Sometimes what happens, oh, rickshaw wale hota na, well, they show the hand on the left side and they turn to the right side. So that is what directionally the impaired are. And the second thing is there is difficulty. Difficulty in distinguishing fingers. So this is also known as finger agnosia. You cannot distinguish the different fingers. All the fingers look same to you. You know, all the fingers, uh, if, if I did something like this, you would know this is my first finger. The, the person would not understand with the dominant hemisphere abnormality. Okay. Then there is a calculia. You cannot calculate a calculia. Calculation is not possible because I told in the dominant lobe, the max center is where. Like we biology people, we already have a dominant uh, abnormality because we all have a calculia. Okay. Then a graphia. It is a joke. Don't take it to my word. A graphia. What is a graphia? There is disturbance in writing. Writing abnormality. Writing abnormality. A calculia is calculation abnormality. And also vernix. Vernix uh, center is there. Vernix uh, area is in the dominant hemisphere. So you have vernix aphasia. Okay, vernix aphasia, where there is a fluent speech. There is a fluent speech. But it is nonsensical. It is gibberish. It is nonsensical. It has no meaning. Okay. So if I ask what is your name, the person will tell me polar bear and lions. Okay. So no sense. But he will tell it rapidly. Polar, polar bear and lions. So that is what you need to know. Now these three, that finger agnosia, finger agnosia, a calculia and a graphia. This triad is known as Gerstmann syndrome. This triad is known as Gerstmann syndrome. It is to be differentiated with Gerstmann strossler shanker which is a part of prion abnormality. The cortical ribboning and all the prion disease. Kuru and this GSS Gerstmann strossler shanker is a prion disease. But this Gerstmann syndrome is due to dominant area damage. Now, if the non-dominant uh, non hemisphere is involved, then the first simple thing that you have is A, no so. Gnosia. What is a nosognosia? You have, you ignore the opposite side. Uh, you ignore the opposite side. That is usually the left side. 
left side you ignore the opposite side like imagine my non dominant hemisphere is on the right side then when i have a right side a right hemisphere injury in the parietal lobe i will forget that i have a left limb okay i i will say that this limb is not mine this is someone else's so that is a nosognosia that is uh, you know the patient is no longer aware of the limb on the opposite side of the non dominant hemisphere okay there is a neglect there is a hemi neglect of one part of body this is a type of neglect hemi neglect okay then next is dressing apraxia dressing apraxia if you give the patient a, a shirt the hand will not go inside the shirt okay they will not be able to wear a pant okay on the opposite side of the non dominant hemisphere then there is something known as geographical apraxia or oh, sorry agnosia what is geographical agnosia agnosia okay ha huh. what is geographical agnosia now imagine you are living in a uh, first floor second floor or like a 5 bhk house of ground floor and first floor okay and you know that your room is on first floor but this patients of geographical agnosia will forget where their room is they will go into the toilet and say hey, this is my room so forgetting the location of your room is a basic example of geographical agnosia or the patient will not be able to find their bed inside the ward if they are admitted they will go and sleep on anyone else's bed so that is geographical agnosia they forget the simple geographical milestones which they have been visiting or which they have been using for years okay and the last one is constructional constructional apraxia what is constructional apraxia imagine i give you a image like ye teer goro this arrow you draw this arrow the patient with constructional apraxia will draw something like this something nonsensical okay so that has constructional apraxia they can not copy the geometrical pattern of the uh, that image that you show them so uh, the uh, as you know the parietal lobe is primarily supplied by uh, middle cerebral artery so middle cerebral artery occlusion on the non dominant hemisphere will lead to just one syndrome this was the important part i hope you like the video and in the next video we will probably cover cover temporal lobe and occipital lobe together and that's all for today guys and i'll see you in the next one